Meet Ali Bennett, a friend of mine, a young Muslim born and raised in Sydney, Australia, who has lived quite a successful life. However, it was only recently that his life took a dramatic turn. This is Ali's story. Where are you at now with your life? What's happened to you? At this point in my life, well, uh, yani, I've been gifted, yani, alhamdulillah, by Allah, with um, yani, cancer throughout my body. And um, yani, I've changed my whole life to sort of helping people. Why do you call it a gift, Ali? And alhamdulillah, it's, it's a gift because, because um, And it's a gift because um, yani Allah has given me a chance to, to change. What has having cancer, what has it opened your eyes to? It's yani, everything in life, yani. even, even the yani, smallest gift, like uh, yani breathing fresh air. Do you feel like you used to take that for granted before? How long have you had cancer? Four months now. Ali was diagnosed with stage 4 cancer and given only seven months to live. Upon finding the news, he immediately sold his successful business and was forced to reconsider the lavish lifestyle he was accustomed to. Everything was to change. Ali, what was your reaction? When you came to know you had cancer, I got rid of my my cars, I got rid of my watches, even my clothes. I took them with me overseas, and I and I gave them to a lot of people up there. So I wanted to try to leave this world without anything. So you're on a mission yeah. to get rid of your dunya. It wasn't until Ali invited us into his room that we truly understood the luxurious lifestyle that he was living and the extent of the sacrifice that he was making. What's all this, Ali? Talk to me, explain this. That's stuff. a bracelet, Yani. Costs about 60,000. 60, $60,000? $60, yeah. What do you have in these boxes, Ali? They're all my shoes, alhamdulillah. Louis Vuitton? All Louis Vuitton. How much is something like this worth, Ali? They're probably about 1300 How much you pay for that, Ali? About 700 Thumbs? For a pair of thumbs, yeah. So what's happening with the sunglasses here, Ali? I just like collecting different sunglasses. Yeah? I've got rid of a lot of them. I gave them to a couple of brothers at, in Africa, alhamdulillah. So you're telling me there's a kid in Africa that's walking around with Louis Vuittons and... <laughs> <laughs> Can I try one of these hats on? I've only mentioned them in my talks like a hundred times. You can try the red one on. It's limited edition one. Barakallah. What do you reckon, Niels? Shaq, Shaq Gucci. <laughs> Ali's interest in the dunya has left him abruptly and no longer holds a place in his heart. So Ali, what do you feel now like when you look at this? And driving something like this doesn't really cross my mind anymore. It's not, and it's not something I would want to do no more. After someone tells you, or you find out that you're sick, or you haven't got much time in this life, well, this is the last thing, Yanni, you would want to chase. And this, this is how we should be living our life every day. Carl, like these people would love to be in it, people would love to own, people would love to drive it. Well, they're going for the wrong goals. And you realise that when you get sick, when someone tells you you haven't got long to live, you realise all this stuff it does not benefit us in any way. So what's the value of this in your heart now? This? This is worth yani, one pair of thongs for, 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 a, for a little African child with no thongs. Wallahi, it's worth more than me to see him smile with a pair of thongs than own one of these. Wallahi al-Azim. Ali has since dedicated the remainder of his life and wealth to helping those who are far less fortunate than him. After an emotional journey to Africa, Ali has established a charity titled Muslims Around the World Project. The organization wasted no time in the construction of a masjid 
and a school in Africa to serve as an ongoing charity for him when he finally has to depart this world. Well, it all started from when I was, I went to the cemetery when a brother that has the same, that has cancer passed away. And I was at the cemetery and I was just thinking to myself, you know, after you go, there's nothing. There's no one there for you. No, no mother, no father, no brother, no sister, except for your deeds. Even your money is not going to be there for you. So the only thing that's going to be there for you is a salaka. And that's the only thing that's going to help you gradually through your, through your time in the grave till you get to the ultimate destination. As the reality of death further sinks in, Ali spends most of his personal time in preparing himself for his final meeting with his Creator, Allah. The Prophet of Allah says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, more or less, he says, He who loves to meet Allah, Allah loves to meet him. And he who hates to meet Allah, Allah hates to meet him. Are you loving to meet Allah? Because of this cancer, I've been advised by one of the brothers to take a special and he drug to help me with pain and stuff and subhanallah it's very strong I took a bit too much and I came into a, a whole different world within not knowing where I was and it was very hard for me and subhanallah I actually seen things I've never seen before and my family were there all standing around me and I was pointing up and I was saying, and he, Ya Allah, take me. And it, it was that beautiful what I was seeing. I just wanted to go. And the next day, subhanAllah, I woke up and I was upset that Allah didn't take me. Well, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to purify you and to give you shifa to keep you around us for a long time. Allah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you.